infrastructure is the backbone of the country and there are a lot of challenges when we start a project any sort of new or a disruptive technology has to deal with a certain degree of inertia when we look at india today uh, from our perspective when we talk of the industry uh, india is a great promise as we see it we have been talking about what you call a individual mobility but something on mass rapid uh, i think which is the key for india good evening ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us this evening we've had a fantastic opening two days at the expo um and i would like to take this opportunity to thank the dignitaries on the dais for for their continued support uh sanket ji thank you so much for your hello, support hello. and for your presence here this evening um kunal ji as i mentioned to you when we were walking in i know just how busy uh, you two gentlemen are and how busy your schedule is so i appreciate your presence here this evening uh, and we had the opportunity of playing uh, the mantri ji's video on the big screen and he recorded it from his aircraft yesterday so thank you so much for giving us that honor as well um puneet thank you so much for for being here and for your continued support um hyundai is road safety partner and we we truly appreciate your that initiative um and your support and uh, jodhbir welcome and thank you thank so you. much again kpmg is an integral part of uh, of the expo and as knowledge partners uh, plays a very important part so um thank you all here this uh, this evening i'd like to start with a short video we're going to sort of segue into a, a number of topics because we have a mm, vast experience on the panel so everything from road building and infrastructure to mobility electric mobility the future of mobility and and sustainability um and before we start i just like to say that when uh, i was last at the ministry of road transport and highways there was a um a poster on the wall with a quote by john f kennedy that said i have it here somewhere it said that uh, america is is not rich because uh, that's right it says american roads are not good because america is rich but america uh, is rich because of american roads and i have a feeling at the pace at which your ministry is ensuring that highways and roads are being built in india we'll be having a very similar uh, comment and a very similar saying for for india very soon uh, and it's certainly keeping pace with um, the new india and perhaps even the impatience of of india and the development that you're thrusting forward is is really quite fantastic uh, so speaking of which i'd like to start with a short video of the zozilla tunnel project and if we can cue that video please le the capital of union territory of ladakh connects to kashmir valley and rest of india through the zozilla pass The terrain at a 3528 meters height lies amid snow-capped mountains. Heavy snowfall and avalanches in the area keep this strategically very important pass closed for traffic for around 5 months in a year. This is going to change very soon. A tunnel is being constructed under the Zozila Pass to ensure round the year connectivity with Ladakh. Kargil and other strategic points in this bordering area. Though conceived as early as 2006, actual work on it could commence only when Sri Nitin Gadkari, the Union Minister for Road Transport and Highways, took the initiative to get it constructed after a number of failed attempts. The foundation stone for the project was laid by the Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi in May 2018. However, the actual work on the tunnel could be inaugurated on 15th October 2020 with a ceremonial blasting led by Shri Gadkari. The project redesigning and engineering under guidance of honorable minister also resulted in cost reduction by more than 3000 crore. Since then, the project is being carried out in full swing. The 14.15 km long Zozila tunnel is planned as India's longest road tunnel. 
The two-lane 10.5 meter wide and 9 meter high Zuzila tunnel will be in horseshoe shape and will have three vertical ventilation shafts. Work on 18.474 kilometers long approach road to the tunnel is progressing rapidly. As this showpiece infra project has been targeted to be completed before the Republic Day 2024 for which all the efforts are being put in place by NHI DCL. The tunnel will have firefighting system, emergency calling system, CCTV and internal telephony with a control room to control traffic. Work is in progress on 7 km long part of the 18.474 km approach road. Two tunnels in the approach road Namely, Negrar tunnels are being constructed between Sonmarg and Zozila main tunnel. Herring excavation work of both the tubes of Negrar tunnel 1 has been completed. Hose cumulative length is 915 meters. For Negrar tunnel 2, hose cumulative length is 3907 meters. Herring excavation work of 1759 meters has been completed. Work on all six foundations of the bridge number one and all five foundations of the bridge number two have been completed. One of the 15 foundations of bridge number three is under construction. A total of 41 culverts have been constructed in this tunnel project. Work on 15 of these is progressing rapidly. Zozila main tunnel of length 14.150 kilometers is being excavated from both the ends of tunnel that are Baltal and Meenamarg. Total heading excavation of 943 meters has been achieved. Completion of the Zozila tunnel will allow all weather connectivity between Srinagar and Ladakh and the journey will be less strenuous. This historical achievement of the modern India will lead to integrated development of both Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh UTs. The impossible is being turned into possible. Round the year connectivity with Ladakh is expected to be a reality before Republic Day 2024. So, Sankechi, before I turn it over to you for your opening remarks, I just want to say that it's one thing to build a tunnel, but it's another thing to build a tunnel in that terrain, to do any work in that terrain. One of the uh, hardest things I've ever done in my life is we had a flat tire in Changla, and there were four of us, and normally it would take two minutes to change a tire, but it was one of the toughest things that you could do because the oxygen levels um, are, uh, are so low that you can barely breathe. And then the terrain itself is so forbidding that to carry out any work there must be very, very difficult. So can you enlighten us a little bit on how you're being able to construct such massive projects in such difficult terrain? Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, actually, we know that the topic is future of mobility. But just be coming before I spoke to Dhruv and I said that put infra bhi dal do yaar. Infra ke bina mobility kya kaam ke? So basically, uh, talking about this event and all, I remember I came here some three, four years back and uh, I had a uh, session on Bharat Mala. And many of us know that Bharat Mala is an infrastructure ambitious program of building highways and infrastructure all over India. And that is how uh, we started with Exhibition India and all. And today, uh, in the capacity of private secretary to the minister and you all know the minister uh, Mr. Nitin Gadkari ji lot of infrastructure projects are ongoing many have been completed many are in pipeline which will soon start and then again by Zodila Dhruv uh, as you were talking See, infrastructure is the backbone of the country. 
एंड देर आर लॉट ऑफ चैलेंजेस वेन वी स्टार्ट अ प्रोजेक्ट आप एक चाहे गांव की सड़क बना रहे हो या यू आर मेकिंग अ ब्रिज और हाईवे और अ टनल अबाउट जोजिला इट्स वेरी मच स्पेशल आई वॉज पर्सनली इन्वॉल्व इन दिस प्रोजेक्ट दिस इज अ वेरी स्ट्रैटेजिक प्रोजेक्ट इन कश्मीर बेसिकली लिंक्स जम्मू एंड कश्मीर टू लद्दाख एंड वी ऑल नो वेन आई एम सेंग दिस वॉट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट so the idea of this tunnel was first conceived in 2005 actually during kargil war uh, many of the ideas came that why not we should have an tunnel which will just make a switch off from uh, kashmir to ladakh in hardly 5 to 6 hours today it takes one or two days 2005 the idea was conceived then the dpr was made by bro in 2013 somehow this project started in 2016 17 Now this project, if you see the cost, the cost was the initial cost was nine thousand, which escalated to something thirteen thousand crore, and there were two tubes in this tunnel, and it is a permafrost region. When I talk, it is a permafrost. There are glaciers. The temperature is minus twenty, minus thirty in Dras. It is a record of minus forty-eight degree, which we find in Siberia. in that working condition today i will say our engineers are working so this project came and again the, uh, the about this project it was like uh, financially it was not viable to a single project of 15000 crore it will take to 7 6 to 7 years and then the minister took a review meeting and then we remodeled it we re- redesign it with a single tube and you know lot of things were added Uh, subtracted and all and you will not believe the cost the cost of the project civil cost can anybody guess the figure from the audience jo 15000 crore ka project tha wo tender mein kitna aaya hoga anybody can guess it was 4500 crore so actually it was one third of the actual total capital cost but with some uh, like la utd shifting and all miscellaneous charges it crosses over 1000 2000 crore so you know it <laughs> goes away so basically this project is a very important project it is a strategic project and i thought when i'm coming here there are a lot of things to say you know like bombay pune expressway there delhi mumbai corridor is there iconic bridge in bet darwa uh, bet dwarka is there the first multimodal logistic park in jogi gupha is there like if i start talking on infrastructure project there are many projects but let's again uh, give importance to our national security and uh, zozila uh, so i think that uh, this is one project where really nhi dcl is doing a good headway and it will reduce the time from 3 hours to 15 minutes aur aap socho ki usme kitna petrol bachega kitna diesel bachega how fast the मेडिकल एड कैन गो हाउ फार हाउ फास्ट आर आर्म फोर्सेस हाउ फास्ट आर आर्म फोर्सेस कैन मोबालाइज आर सेल्फ टूवर्ड द एल ओ सी टूवर्ड द अदर कंट्री एंड ऑल सो दिस इज वॉट द प्रोजेक्ट अबाउट एंड आई इज गोइंग वेरी फाइन एंड वी ऑल आर प्रेसिंग कि वो समय पर कम्प्लीट हो जाए होपफुली बाय टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर थैंक यू थैंक यू संगेश जी um uh, i was only mentioning the difficulties of terrain but you mentioned that so uh, there are difficulties of budget also and in difficulty there's opportunity and your ministry is certainly making the most of that opportunity to uh, not only build infrastructure but to do it within a timeline that uh, m- makes it that much more effective and under budget which is unheard of so uh, congratulations to you on that uh, kunal ji if i can switch to you um while we are talking about infrastructure we also need to discuss repurposing infrastructure for the future of mobility but what in your mind is the future of mobility mobility by definition is an essential public service which people right from the lowest end of your economic spectrum need until the basically a per- a person who drives a bicycle to a person who you know travels in a chopper all of them need mobility 
the question in front of us is how are we providing this mobility to them in a way that we are minimizing the cost not the monetary cost component but cost in terms of health cost in terms of clean air to breathe cost in terms of depleting natural resources and cost in terms of saving of time now after looking at all of these parameters agar kuch bach jata hai to that gives you scope to put all of these parameters together and deliver a policy which allows you to you know give efficient and clean and green mobility to start off with we currently import crude oil worth 8 lakh crore in india and a majority component of this crude oil which is imported is undoubtedly no doubt about that for the transportation purposes the fuel fuel now if we do not the rate at which the indian transport sector or the mobility or the automobile sector for that matter is growing the size of the indian automobile sector is 7.5 lakh crore with an export of 3 lakh crore with such a rate it's good to grow of course because we are providing employment we are providing you know a great headway into a sector towards becoming the number one automobile hub of the world but at the same point of time as i said earlier we have to ask ourselves a question about how are we powering our vehicles are we ready to take this import bill up and are we ready to let some leverage be built upon built upon our own nation of import because import as a burden does not allow you to a fiscal freedom to invest into different sectors of the economy where you would have otherwise benefited in terms of uplifting party developing good schools developing good hospitals and so on and so forth so the whole concept of atmanirbharata which was you know uh, given to us by an honorable prime minister was covid ek bahana tha but that was a latent thought within the minds of a lot of people including our honorable minister ki kab tak hum बाहर से लाए हुए रिसोर्सेस के ऊपर में अपनी खुद की गाड़ियां चलाना चाहते हैं ये एक बहुत बेसिक सा सवाल वो अपने आप से भी पूछ रहे थे एंड राइट सिंस 2007 एंड 8 ही इज बीन प्रोपोगेटिंग बायोफ्यूल्स पीपल यू शू लाफ क्या है इथेनॉल इथेनॉल में पानी है करोजन होगा इंजन खराब हो जाएगा नॉकिंग का प्रॉब्लम है गाड़ी बंद पड़ जाएगी सी थिंग इज any sort of new or a disruptive technology has to deal with a certain degree of inertia ek jo alas hota hai wo bahut natural sa alas hota hai kisi bhi sector mein to move towards something that is new as law makers as policy makers what we in the government have to ask ourselves is ki kya humne enough incentives paida kiye ki sare stakeholders उस एक नए रेजीम की तरफ मूव करें एंड वेन वी आर एबल टू आस्क आर रादर आंसर दैट क्वेश्चन कि येस देर आर इन इनफ इंसेंटिव फॉर द गवर्नमेंट फॉर दू नो ऑटो इंडस्ट्री फॉर द कंपोनेंट मैन्युफैक्चर फॉर द कस्टमर्स टू बी एबल टू मेक दैट शिफ्ट दैट इज वेन वीड से येस वी डिलीवर्ड अ गुड पब्लिक पॉलिसी अदरवाइज जो मन में आया वैसा पॉलिसी बनाना इज समथिंग दैट इज not only a waste of public time and money but is a great disservice to the nation i personally believe yeah no but you're absolutely right i mean overcoming that inertia in and of itself um with, for the introduction of anything that's new is uh, is quite a challenge so uh, to to overcome that is is quite something uh, to get a view from industry puneet if i can switch to you um speaking of of make in india uh, while your headquarters might be overseas the scale of your manufacturing facilities and the and the scale of the employment that you provide in india um is 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 quite remarkable but from the point of view of future of mobility uh, what what is your view from an industry standpoint where are we headed and how do we get there uh thank you i think uh, first of all good afternoon everyone and my uh, thanks to my fellow panelists uh, 
मिस्टर कुणाल जोशी श्री संकेत जी एम एस सचदेवा वेन वी लुक एट इंडिया टुडे फ्रॉम आर परस्पेक्टिव एन वी टॉक ऑफ द इंडस्ट्री इंडिया इज अ ग्रेट प्रॉमिस एज वी सीट आई थिंक इन टर्म्स ऑफ द फ्यूचर पोटेंशियल फॉर द मोबिलिटी वी आर टूडे लुकिंग एट द पेनीट्रेशन ऑफ अराउंड ट्वेंटी एट कार्स पर थाउजेंड पॉपुलेशन इवन इफ एट लुक एट अवर नियरेस्ट नेबर्स द पेनीट्रेशन ऑफ कार्स करंटली स्टैंड एट अराउंड अराउंड हंड्रेड एंड एटी पर थाउजेंड एंड एन वी इनफैक्ट वेन यू टॉकिंग ऑफ द डेवलप्ड इकॉनमीज लाइक द यूरोप एंड यू एस द पेनीट्रेशन इज एज हाई एज फाइव हंड्रेड फिफ्टी टू एट हंड्रेड फिफ्टी कार्स पर थाउजेंड पीपल नो विद द पोटेंशियल सच अ ग्रेट पोटेंशियल थैंक्स टू द ऑनरेबल मिनिस्ट्री एंड द ऑनरेबल पी एम ऑफ दिस कंट्री that the future is set for a great growth in the automotive sector and we at hyundai have always been believing that the biggest growth which will come will happen when we are not looking at mobility in terms of the ic engine but transition of ic engine to the various kinds of mobility fuels in fact we have already seen the changes which have happening in the last couple of years uh if i recall 2019 july 2019 we were the first company to launch a full scale electric suv the kona and very soon we will be launching some other new great products in this country we have already recently announced our vision of launching six brand new evs in the next couple of years with an investment of more than 4000 to 4500 crores now that shows the potential and also that shows the adoptivity which this country will have because people were thinking that whether electric cars will become a reality but when you are looking every day in the newspaper you will find ministries government trade bodies all of them looking at investing into the infrastructure as well as e highways are concerned or electric charging stations are concerned and we probably will be adding close to 10000 charging station in the next couple of years now with all these charging stations coming up and i think rightly mentioned by shri kunal ji our dependence on these fossil fuels has to reduce so today we are talking of biofuel we are talking of flex fuel vehicles we are talking of electric vehicles and i think the honorable pm in his last independence day address very clearly defined the next big growth engine which is the hydrogen economy and i think the green hydrogen also promises to be a great fuel for the future as far as india is concerned and we are very happy to share that india has large abundance of hydrogen and we at hyundai already have a technology which we are commercially selling in the form of nexo and our commercial track across the world so we are very excited the industry is very excited and i am sure the next 5 years will define a big leap frog of the indian mobility sector from the current roughly 3.1 million somewhere to 3.5 and then eventually to 5 million making india one of the largest automotive manufacturer in the world not to mention that we will also be one of the largest exporter of automotive because of the cost of operations and also the quality which india gives to the world Hyundai has been the largest exporter for the last 20 years and this shows our commitment to make in India and uh, very soon we will also be launching some new great products in this country which will define the progress as far as the future of mobility is concerned so again my thanks is to our public who are putting their trust in the products and the services which we launch and also largely to the policies by the honorable government especially in terms of the PLI schemes whether it was into the automotive manufacturing or whether it is into component manufacturing and off late into the battery architecture the recent scheme of you know cell chemistry has been a great game changer and i think that will define the way of future of mobility so i think we are very upbeat and i think we will thank once again everyone and the audience to keep their fingers crossed for new marvels of technology to be launched from the automotive industry as far as india is concerned thank you punit Uh, you know one of the things that struck me personally over the last two days in all the deliberations that has that have been taking place um here in this hall which is more smart cities uh, centric and sustainability and the other hall which is more communication centric yesterday there was a discussion on make in india and telecom and what struck me is the bullishness of both industry and government in regards to the future of india and india's place in the world going forward um and that for me has been the common theme at the expo over the course of the last two days and and that's something that i i feel is 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 excellent and is something that is very heartwarming uh, and uh, we there's a lot of optimism going forward so that's that's great to see
Jodhbir, if I can ask you to just give us a helicopter perspective, because we've talked about so many things, whether it's hydrogen or flex fuels or biofuels or EVs. Um, what about the nature of the supply chain when it comes to EVs, whether it's the minerals or the rare earth materials? Um, is that a concern if we're talking about reducing our important uh, our, our dependence on uh, oil, which is imported? Is there a chance of switching that dependence to something else, perhaps? Uh, see, from a mobility or a future of mobility perspective, uh, first from a helicopter view perspective, if you look at the mega trends which are impacting the future of mobility. Uh, the first one very clearly is on the technology side and the way the technology is changing not just the movement of uh, people and goods but also in terms of how technology is interfacing with various elements in the ecosystem. So right now say for example a car or a passenger vehicle would not really communicate or interact with the infrastructure which is there uh, on which it is being driven, right? But in future, what we will see are more connected vehicles and more intelligent transport systems. And that will have a huge impact in terms of how we design our transport systems going forward. So this is a very, very clear shift which is coming in terms of technology. And that also essentially positions in terms of the transport systems to shift towards a more autonomous uh, kind of movement of vehicles. We do have some autonomous movement, say for example in urban transport in metros, but that is one area where there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of technology changes which are happening. The second mega trend that we see is around sustainability and this is something which the fellow panelists have also mentioned and in terms of the reduction on dependence on fossil fuels, in terms of reducing what is essentially the import bill and how do we transition from a fossil fuel based economy or movement to a more clean energy based movement. It has its own implications like say for example what you mentioned in terms of the shift of import bill from say oil to how do we get the EV batteries in and the kind of minerals which would be required. Say for example if you were to look at the key components of EV batteries at this point of time you would probably have cobalt my uh, about uh, mining which would be happening in Congo, then it would, it would be going for refining in somewhere in say uh, Finland, then it will be going to China for the development of uh, the cells and then it will be coming back to India for the development of the EV parks, right? So there's a whole huge supply chain which is, uh, which has been created around it. But there is also a lot of in research and investments which is happening in terms of creating what is known as urban mining or creating a circular economy around uh, this uh, of, around these batteries. Say for example, if you were to, to take the case of the mobile phones, which also has a battery, which is a very smaller battery as compared to the battery pack, which will go into the EV. But the proportion of minerals, say for example, cobalt in 300 of such mobile battery packs is equivalent to the amount of mineral which will go into one EV cell, right? So there is a lot of uh, research which is happening, it's an upcoming area, but potentially in future we'll see uh, those kind of uh, elements which will come into play. The third mega trend that we are seeing uh, from a future of mobility perspective is, uh, it's no longer just about providing the infrastructure, right? It is about looking at providing services, keeping the user as a center. So we are seeing a shift towards a more user-centric services which have a seamless integration of all modes of transport. Say for example, if a person needs to move from uh, his or her home to office, there has to be very seamless movement from the first mile to the last mile to the major public transport which uh, happens in between. And we are seeing a lot of trends around say for example providing mobility as a service around it, integrated payments which impact the seamless user experience and also giving the uh, the user a visibility, visibility to improve the reliability of services. So these are two, three key mega trends which are shaping the future of mobility in the country. Thank you. Uh, Sakeji and uh, Kunalji, if I can switch to you for a minute. 
you know uh, it seems to us on the outside that there are so many different elements to this discussion whether it's infrastructure related whether it's for instance the other day gadkari ji inaugurated a pilot project on hydrogen uh, mobility in a personal vehicle there's uh, biofuels there's evs there are so many different aspects that you have to look at as policy makers how do you uh, even begin to prioritize what those uh, aspects are that you need to focus on and what are some of the biggest challenges that you face bolto as policy makers one thing which fascinates all policy makers or people who are at the helm of affairs or are able to control things is regulation the moment one policy maker gets to know that okay look i can regulate one particular sector or a technology that is when the real problem starts uh to to give you a very uh, nicely put example by sachdeva saab about mobile phone now back in 1995 motorola and siemens used to they used to kind of manufacture mobile phones itne mote hote the naya technology tha koi sarkari aadmi tab sochta ki chalo let me regulate the mobile phone space <laughs> रेगुलेट कर दूं कि 15 सेंटीमीटर बाय 20 सेंटीमीटर का मोबाइल होना चाहिए 25 250 ग्राम की बैटरी होनी चाहिए उस बैटरी का ये होना चाहिए तो मोबाइल वुड नेवर हैव बीन दिस स्मॉल तो मॉरल ऑफ द स्टोरी इज व्हेन एवर देयर इज एन इमर्जिंग सेट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजीज दैट आर एंटरिंग इनटू द मार्केट सम सॉर्ट ऑफ पेरेंटल रेगुलेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर दैट इनिशियल थ्रस्ट फॉर दैट टेक्नोलॉजी टू सरवाइव बट आफ्टर दैट जैसे बच्चे बच्चा साइकिल चलाना एक बार चलाना शुरू कर देता है उसको छोड़ दो देन लेट इट बी मार्केट ड्रिवन दैट इज व्हेन द टेक्नोलॉजी विल प्रॉस्पर सिमिलरली दैट एग्जांपल कैन बी अप्लाइड टू इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स एज वेल ईवी एंड द हिस्टीरिया अराउंड ईवी इज इज सच की कैसे होगा इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स आएंगे या नहीं आएंगे इज दैट अ रियालिटी लेट्स अगेन गो बैक टू नाइनटीन नाइनटी फाइव आई एम अच इज वाई एम काइंड ऑफ ऑप्सेस विद नाइनटीन उस टाइम पे हमारे जो सीट लाइट्स होते थे सोडियम वेपर लैम्प्स पहले वाइट और फिर धीर ऐसे होके येलो हो जाते थे एक्सट्रीमली इनफिशियंट एक्सट्रीमली पोल्यूटिंग और इलेक्ट्रिक कंजम्पन तो पूछो ही मत उस टाइम पे नया नया एलईडी जब 1997 98 में आया तो एलईडी ऐसा लगता था कि वाओ वॉट एन इन्वेंशन लाइट एमिटिंग डायोड इसका इतना कम इलेक्ट्रिक कंजम्पन है लाइट भी अच्छा एमिट करता है बट ओनली प्रॉब्लम इज कॉस्ट यू कोई किसी ने सोचा भी नहीं था कि आज के तारीख में आपके स्ट्रीट लाइट से लेके आपके टीवी से लेके फोन एवरीथिंग विल बी बेस्ड आउट ऑफ एल ई डी ना वाई डज दिस थिंग हैपन इट्स अ गेम ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स लाइफ साइकिल कॉस्ट ऑफ एलिमेंट्स विच गो इन टू प्रोडक्शन ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजीज वेरीज फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम वॉट हैपन्स इज इकोनॉमी ऑफ स्केल एक फंडा ऐसा है जो सब पे अप्लाई नहीं होता इकोनॉमी ऑफ स्केल से भी एक स्टेप पहले हमको देखना होता है कि उस पर्टिकुलर एलिमेंट का लाइफ साइकिल कॉस्ट का ट्रेंड कैसा चल रहा है फॉर एग्जांपल लिथियम आयन का जो लाइफ साइकिल कॉस्ट इन इंडिया है एट दिस पॉइंट इट इज अराउंड 150 डॉलर्स पर किलोवाट आवर व्हिच इज मेकिंग इट स्लाइटली एक्सपेंसिव नाउ इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड दैट इन अयर्स टाइम और अयर अयर एंड हाफ टाइम this life cycle cost of lithium ion lithium will come down as an element lithium as an element will come down in the range of 100 or 110 odd dollars per kilowatt hour that is the point when lithium ion batteries will allow electric vehicles to be as competitive as ic engine vehicles similar logic aapke sath mein leds ka bhi hua silicon wafer ka jo cost tha leds mein silicon ka jo cost tha us time pe high tha life cycle element wo baad mein economy of scale की वजह से बड़ा हो के कम हो गया उसका कॉस्ट सो एवरी टेक्नोलॉजी हैज इट्स ओन टाइम इन अ डिफरेंट सॉर्ट ऑफ सेटअप ऑफ अ मार्केट इफ यू ओवर रेगुलेटेड यू विल किल द प्रोस्पेक्ट ऑफ द टेक्नोलॉजी टू ग्रो ऑल्सो इफ यू अंडर रेगुलेटेड यू विल नॉट लेट दैट टेक्नोलॉजी एंटर एट ऑल और यू विल रादर प्रोवाइड स्कोप फॉर ऑल सॉर्ट ऑफ रॉन्ग डूइंग्स और अनवॉन्टेड एक्टिविटीज इन टू द मार्केट विच इज वाई द की टू आंसर योर क्वेश्चन ध्रुव जी इज द राइट सेट ऑफ रेगुलेशन टू एंड इट वेर आई स्टार्टेड ऑफ एज अ पॉलिसी मेकर रेगुलेशन इज द की अब वो रेगुलेट कितना करना है कितना नहीं करना है वेरी इज फ्रॉम अ पॉलिसी मेकर टू अ पॉलिसी मेकर 
Well, that's a very pragmatic view, and uh, I, I think that's really what is needed going forward. So I will add to this. Kunal have given a very excellent overview. Actually, as a bureaucrat, I have worked at every stage. I was an uh, assistant collector. I was collector. I was CEO. I was deputy secretary. I was director. And now I'm PS. So I have seen. I have worked on every table, every desk. So the environment around the officer. where he works is also very important kunal have rightly said about the regulation and all but about when we are sitting here and talking about the mobility let me give you two three examples and how our mobility or our regulations are market driven ab 1984 mein maruti aayi to kunal is 1990s ki na to main 80 ka baat karunga matlab salman khan mithun chakravarti and you know wo wala age tha inke time shayad naye heroes aaye the to maruti came डायनामिक्स चेंज पहले तो वो फियाट थी एम्बेसडर थी तो कोई गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ने नहीं लाया मारुति को करेक्ट वो इट इट हैड द ओन एडवांटेजेस सेम अबाउट वोल्वो वन इज एग्जांपल इज वोल्वो नाउ वी से वोल्वो वोल्वो इज एन एक्चुअली अ कार ब्रांड बट वी से कि नहीं यार वोल्वो में जाना है देन इज हाउ मेनी ऑफ द बिग बस मेकर्स केम अप विद अ लो फ्लोर एंड यू नो स्लीपिंग अरेंजमेंट अच्छा आपको ताजुब होगा कि ये जो आ, स्लीपर गाड़ियाँ होती है ना जहाँ लोग सो के जाते थे फ्रॉम ए टू बी ये कहीं रेगुलेशन में नहीं थी इट इज मार्केट ड्रिवन जब मार्केट में ये गाड़ियाँ बनी फिर रेगुलेशन आया तो बिकॉज द पब्लिक डिमांड जो एक गैप है डिमांड सप्लाई का या समवेयर वी आर बिहाइंड एंड पब्लिक एक्सपेक्ट्स मोर या हम कर नहीं पा रहे हैं देर आर मैनी सच थिंग देर आर मैनी सच एग्जाम्पल्स बट येस you have to make and maintain a fine balance because uh, both side you should see as a as a officer you should both the side while making the regulation public ka tax payer ka money hai aapka paisa hai aap log income tax bhar rahe hain to kahin na kahin wo paisa you know we are spending on some things and all again bahut sari issues aate hain road safety ka ek hota hai usme and uh, there are many factors but what i feel is ki in mobility i think in the last few years uh, we have uh, proceeded heaps and bounds aur main jab 16th of march ko hydrogen car honorable minister ne launch ki to maine kunal ko ekdam jokingly kaha in a lighter note ki yaar ye baithunga nahi main us gaadi mein dar lagta hai ye foot bit na jaye abhi main usko leta rehta hu ki hydrogen hai boss tumne testing missing karayi ki nahi hydrogen is very inflammable na but then that is all perfect and all uh, we are into the electric age and we are talking of hydrogen so i think soon uh, not within the next 5 6 years as soon as we will saturate with electric hydrogen will start but technology is like ki aap it is endless yeah just to quickly add very nicely put by sanket sir ki the gamut of fuels in the time to come is changed jo ek perennial thought hota tha ki ek gaadi hogi ek petrol pump hoga petrol pump pe diesel aur petrol milega wahan pe sab jo gaadi ko chalne ke liye jo sab suvidhaen hain wo is petrol pump pe mil jayengi and then i can carry over Now, this thought is slightly you know a lot of people are confused log bolte hain yaar friends from automobile industry i would name a lot of them say यार क्लियरली बताओ क्या फ्यूल है वॉट इज द फ्यूल फॉर द फ्यूचर कभी आप बोलते हो एथेनॉल कभी बोलते हो मैथेनॉल कभी सी एन जी कभी एल एन जी कभी इलेक्ट्रिक कभी हाइब्रिड इलेक्ट्रिक कभी हाइड्रोजन एंड कभी एच सी एन जी भी आ गया हाइड्रोजन ब्लेंडेड विद एटीन परसेंट ऑफ सी एन जी लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर कंफ्यूज द आंसर टू दैट इज अगेन फ्रॉम वेर आई स्टार्टेड कटिंग ऑफ इम्पोर्ट इज द की ऑब्जेक्टिव उस ऑब्जेक्टिव के साथ में वॉट एवर पॉलिसीज वी डिसाइड ए जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल बायोफ्यूल्स उससे क्या होगा योर एग्रीकल्चर विल बी डिरेक्टली स्ट्रेंथन डाइवर्सिफिकेशन ऑफ फ्यूल डाइवर्सिफिकेशन ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर इन टू एनर्जी एंड पावर सेक्टर आर मिनिस्टर वेरी फॉन्डली सेज कि किसान हमारा अन्नदाता तो है ही बट किसान को अन्नदाता से ऊर्जा दाता भी बनाना है तो दैट इज दी सेक्टर वेयर ही इज हिटिंग two targets one reducing pollution second strengthening the rural and agricultural sector cng again cng is something which can be produced by parali 
तंग है सब लोग दिल्ली में पॉल्यूशन की वजह से ड्यू टू दी बर्निंग ऑफ राइस ट्रॉ इन राइट इन हरियाणा पंजाब पार्ट ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश फाइव टन ऑफ पराली और राइस ट्रॉ गिव वन टन ऑफ बायो सी एन जी एंड वी कैन डू वंडर्स इन मिनिस्टर्स कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी इन नागपुर वी आर रनिंग फोर हंड्रेड बसेस ऑन बायो सी एन जी एंड वी आर एबल टू डू दैट ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ वन स्ट्रॉन्ग पॉलिटिकल विल की नहीं लेटर्स क्वेश्चन द कन्वेंशनल मेथड्स इन द वे इन विच फ्यूल्स आर बींग सीन टू आंसर द क्वेश्चन ऑफ अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल की वॉट इज द प्राइमरी फ्यूल द आंसर इज देर इज नो प्राइमरी फ्यूल एवरीथिंग हैज टू बी मार्केट ड्रिवन जो फ्यूल जो इंडिविजुअल फ्यूल्स के स्ट्रेंथ रिस्पेक्टिव सेक्टर्स में है वो वहां यूज होंगे फॉर एग्जाम्पल इथेनॉल सी एन जी कैन बी यूज फॉर लाइट मोटर व्हीकल एल एन जी कैन बी यूज फॉर ट्रक्स एंड हैवी ड्यूटी व्हीकल्स इलेक्ट्रिक कैन बी अगेन यूज फॉर लाइट मोटर व्हीकल्स एंड ऑल्सो कार्गो कैपेसिटी हाइड्रोजन विच इज इन द टेस्टिंग स्टेज कैन अगेन बी यूज फॉर लाइट मोटर व्हीकल्स एंड सो इट्स अ कॉस्ट एंड इकोनॉमिक्स का गेम है सर्वाइवल ऑफ द फिटेस्ट लेट ऑल द फ्यूल्स कम इन टू द मार्केट एज पीपल इन द सरकार अगेन एज आई सेड रेगुलेशन विल बी आर की कि वी विल अलाउ एंट्री ऑफ ऑल द फ्यूल्स इन टू द मार्केट वी विल लीव इट ऑन टू द कंज्यूमर्स एंड एनश्योर दैट ऑल द कंज्यूमर्स हैव सफिशियंट एक्सेस टू दीज फ्यूल्स ऑल द कंज्यूमर्स आर सफिशियंटली एजुकेटेड अबाउट द सेफ्टी नॉर्म्स अबाउट यूजिंग दीज फ्यूल्स एंड देन अगेन लिविंग इट मार्केट ड्रिवन बिकॉज अगर हम बोले कि नहीं इलेक्ट्रिक 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 मैं बहुत लोगों को कहता हूँ ओके जादू की छड़ी से हाइपोथेटिकल सिचुएशन जादू की छड़ी से लेट्स कन्वर्ट फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ आर व्हीकल फ्लीट इन इंडिया ऑन टू इलेक्ट्रिक डू वी हैव द पार टू पावर देम टूडे द आंसर इज नो सो इट्स नॉट अ सिंगल प्रोसेस इट्स अ पैरल प्रोसेस वेर नॉट ओनली यू हैव टू पुश पीपल टूवर्ड्स यूजिंग क्लीनर फ्यूल्स बट साइमल्टेनियसली ऑल्सो डेवलप योर एबिलिटी टू डेवलप रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी कैपेसिटी फ्रॉम अ मिक्स ऑफ ए सोलर बी विंड सी geothermal wherever available and again blending it with because the net net zero carbon ka jo hum vaada karke aaye hain pradhan mantri ji hamare we have to work towards that by 2070 and that will only be possible when there are a multidirectional efforts but coherent multidirectional yet coherent and in a way that are centered towards reducing our imports and redirecting that additional money which is generated towards the other parts of the economy you know this is a very exciting discussion and it's one that i would love to have for the entire day especially with a panel as distinguished as as the one i have with me on the stage but i'm cognizant of the time so um if i can request uh, concluding remarks from from all the speakers and if i can start at the other end of the stage uh, jodhveer if i can start with you for some concluding remarks and then we'll we'll go down the stage <clears throat> right uh, no so very uh, first of all very very good the insightful discussions and i uh, fully agree with what kunal ji has just said is that essentially uh, it is the market dynamics which come into play right in terms of choosing a technology and technology per se is evolving very very fast there are uh, there are innovations which are happening across board of the i would say that the type of fuel mix which are possible uh, and the second bit which comes into play is that the role essentially becomes to create a conducive environment and have regulations which support the market in the initial phase but eventually given that the huge demand that a country has it is essentially the market will pick up the its own right path right and we'll have probably not just one type of fuel mix in the country but probably three four different technologies which will be required to meet the huge aspirational demand that the country has thank you uh, i mean the beauty of this discussion is as you mentioned from waste we can create bio cng but uh, there are areas in which people are creating actual liquid fuels from from waste and synthetic fuels so really uh, the the spread of options before us going forward is is enormous and at the end of the day as you said the market will decide um and it seems innovation is key so uh, puneet industry is under lots of pressure um yeah, we know that you have r and d in various different fields 
so uh, what is your take going forward yeah thank you and i think thank you but before i give you my concluding remarks i think uh, uh, today i want to confess something over here एंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल पहले तो मैं कुणाल जी को धन्यवाद करता हूँ आज उन्होंने हमारी कोई दिल की बात कही है संकेत जी से भी मैं ये आ, मतलब थैंक्स टू यू आज कुणाल जी ने हमारी ऑटो इंडस्ट्री के दिल की बात कही और वो मैं बात का बताता हूँ कि हमको ना हमारे मंत्री जी जो हैं वो ऑटो इंडस्ट्री से बड़ा प्यार करते हैं और उतना प्यार है उनका कि वो हमको हर महीने कभी ना कभी बुलाते रहते हैं और हम उनके पास जाने से थोड़ा ढगबराते भी हैं और आई थिंक मुझे आज रीज़न समझ में आया कि क्या बात है वो एक्चुअली जब भी हम मंत्री जी के पास किसी टॉपिक के लिए जाते हैं अगर हम सपोज कीजिए ईवी की बात करने जाते हैं तो सडनली उनके दिमाग में फ्लेक्स फ्यूल की बात आ जाती है फिर हम एक महीने बाद उनसे फ्लेक्स फ्यूल की बात करने जाते हैं तो वो बायोगैस की बात शुरू करते हैं फिर हम जब बायोगैस के ऊपर कुछ प्रिपेयर करके जाते हैं तो सडनली एयर का मुद्दा सामने आ जाता है <laughs> तो एज एन इंडस्ट्री हमको कभी कभी घबराहट भी होती है कि हम मंत्री जी के पास जाए या ना जाए ब्रेकिंग यू आप हर एक महीने में एक बार आते हैं हम रोज उनके साथ काम करते हैं <laughs> पर इससे एक बात साबित है और मुझे एक मतलब मंत्री जी की एक बात बड़ी अच्छी लगती है कि उनके दिमाग के जो घोड़े हैं वो हमेशा दौड़ते रहते हैं कल मैं उनकी स्पीच पार्लियामेंट में सुन रहा था उन्होंने एयर बैग्स के ऊपर बड़े अच्छे शब्द कहे उन्होंने कहा कि एक गरीब की जिंदगी और एक अमीर की जिंदगी में कोई फर्क नहीं होना चाहिए एंड आई थिंक ही हैज दैट करेज कि उन्होंने अभी एक रेगुलेशन जारी की है कि आने वाले टाइम में हर कार में छह एयर बैग्स होना वैध हो जाएगा मिनिमम सिक्स एयर बैग्स टू बी गिवन इन अ कार वेदर यू आर अ पुअर ड्राइविंग अ स्मॉल कार और वेदर यू आर रिच इन्फ्लुएंशियल पीपल ड्राइविंग अ बिग कार और अ लग्जरी कार ऑल ऑफ यू मस्ट हैव अ कॉन्फिडेंस दैट योर कार इज सेफ इट इज हैविंग ऑल द पैरामीटर्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ द सेफ्टी सो दैट यू गारंटी योर लाइफ एंड द लाइफ ऑफ योर डियर एंड आई थिंक दैट इज ओवरऑल द फोकस ऑफ दिस गवर्नमेंट दैट दे रियली वॉन्ट टू टारगेट the future of the industry they want to target safety they want to target mobility and i think we are in a very strong era because we being at the forefront of technology being a multinational company having exposure to many economies and many countries uh, this would be a very right moment for us to further expand the growth engine air for the automotive sector is concerned because we all know that today the manufacturing sector is contributing almost 49% to the manufacturing gdp and automotive sector is almost contributing 11% to the overall gdp this is going to become almost 15% as far as the vision 2024 is concerned and with the electrification coming in the way with hydrogen technology coming in the way with flex fuel technology coming in the way and as rightly mentioned that the market will decide what growth or what road they have to take this will be a very interesting phenomena to see in the next 5 to 7 years and by 2030 that's the vision with which the government has also put lot of tasks for the industry yes it will be difficult for us also because there are lot of investments which are in all lot of regulations which will have to be met and i think one example which the industry set was leap frobbing from bs4 to bs6 directly which has never been done in the world even the developed economies moved from bs4 to bs5 to bs6 but india jumped from bs4 to bs6 showing that we have the potential we have the courage and we have the wherewithals of investment because there is a potential in this country there is a potential and this potential will be further augmented by the massive infrastructure thrust which the department of road transport is doing especially when i hear about 40 km road development every day it's a target which has been taken by the morth and the kind of great highways the kind of great infrastructure which we are seeing i think this will show a lot of future lot of promise and today as one industry one voice one country that's our target and that's our commitment to this country that we are going to make it one of the most developed and one of the most profitable economies as far as the automotive market is concerned and that's why today 99.9% of the automotive global manufacturers are in india and one or two who have not been part of this uh, i would say festival will definitely be coming soon and that is what india will promise to be a great future of automotive world great future of manufacturing world and great future for three terms which i will like to say innovation technology and sustainability and that is what will define beyond mobility as far as the topic of today's discussion is concerned so i think that will be my concluding remark and again my thanks to all the fellow panelists for giving us such insightful information and i think the stage is set for a big rapid growth 
as far as India is concerned. Great. Good. Thank you, Puneet. While technology, innovation and sustainability were your three buzzwords, you used a word repeatedly during your address, which was courage. And I think more than anything else, what the ministry has demonstrated is its ability to push development, both from a road uh, laying perspective in terms of the pace of development on the infrastructure side, but also in terms of pushing industry to uh, innovate and to implement advancements, as you said, in a manner in which has never been done anywhere else in the world. So, Sanket ji, if I can request you for some concluding remarks. Uh, see, the topic is the future of mobility. I feel that mobility and infrastructure are two wheels of a cart. Both go hands in hand. Aap vina infrastructure ke mobility kuch kaam ki nahi hai, aur mobility karo aur infrastructure ne kuch kaam ka nahi hai. That's why we started with the Zodula Tunnel. Yes, mobility mein jaise Kunal started ki it should be eco-friendly, sustainable, green, environment friendly and all that. Well, I agree. But one thread jo mein Puni ji se, mein colleague se jo carry karunga, that is very important. That is safety. Safety of human lives. We know that there is almost 1.35 lakhs death every year due to the crashes and accidents on road. And uh, this is somewhere that the utmost and the foremost priority is to save lives. So when we talk of mobility, the future of objects, they have airbags. Ki baat ki, कि पांच एयरबैग होने चाहिए, छह एयरबैग होने चाहिए। There was a lot of debate, discussion, argument. Many media person used to come to me, बोले सब कैसे सर, आप अल्टो में बैठे हो पीछे, और अल्टो में एयरबैग कैसे घुलेगी, और अल्टो में क्या जरूरत है एयरबैग की? वो गाड़ी लेगा, क्या वो एयरबैग? मतलब everybody have his own, you know, his own angle, his own stand. But you all know whatever we did, it was for the best and it was for the public and the human good. So when we talk of mobility, I think safety, safety of human lives. It's at most important one, and uh, a win-win situation will only arise when the interest and the the interest of all the stakeholders. फिर वो पुनी जी बैठे हैं from the uh, from Honda and जो uh, motor vehicles है वो एक segment है public है government है the many stakeholders. Then only you know it will be smooth. But I feel that uh, India today, yes, India today is going fast, growing fast and if you see, जैसे हम, we are the only country, what is that from, we jump from Bharat stage 4 to Bharat stage 6, correct Kunal? So this was like, it is really a miracle मैं कहूँगा, for that, जिनको Euro norms मालूम है, Euro 5, Euro 6 and what I am talking of Bharat stage, Four and six. So yes, India have done it. India is doing it, and India will do it. Uh, that's all. And uh, at last, I will say that yes, it was a wonderful interaction with you all, meeting with my colleagues here, especially Dhruv. I think you have taken a lot of efforts and hard work in arranging this event. And for all the audience who have uh, come here, thank you so much. And we hope to see such more events soon this year. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Sangeet ji. And uh, it, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for, for your support. So thank you once again. Uh, Kunal ji, concluding remarks from you. Sure. I think mobility and transport in India right now, 2022, at a very critical juncture, जो भी policies मतलब एक बहुत critical juncture इसलिए मैं कह रहा हूँ कि whatever policies we decide for ourselves right now, it will pave the way for at least next 40 to 50 years because we are resolved on certain things, we are resolved on a reducing pollution, we are resolved on b producing safer cars, we are resolved on c reducing imports, so all of these things which were discussed today. So, when we are at such a critical juncture, it is really encouraging to see support of the complete auto industry, rightly mentioned by Puni ji. And uh, as BS4 to BS6 ka jo jump hua, wouldn't have been possible without the support of the automotive industry at all. Rather, 
इवन एड्स डिसरेप्टिव स्टेप्स जो हम लोगों ने लिए लाइक एयर बैग्स वी आज द सिंपल क्वेश्चन टू आर सेल्स कि वाई डू यू हैव टू परचेज सेफ्टी इन इंडिया वाई डज सम वन हैव टू पे फिफ्टी थाउजेंड डेढ़ लाख रुपए दो लाख रुपए मोर फॉर अ प्रीमियम सेगमेंट ऑफ अ कार to get one or two additional layer bags why cannot we ensure that the automobiles which we are manufacturing here in india are not only a at par at par with global standards but are also giving a complete set of security irrespective of the class of that particular vehicle and we had an answer to ourselves and really as i said really heartwarming to see a good jesha from pune ji to be supporting that move and i really hope and i'm sure that the auto industry will also support us along with uh, in this journey of road safety reducing emissions going ahead with better leaf frogging technologies and i'd only say one thing to conclude taking everyone together is the key i mean uh, i really like one statement which our minister very fondly says at a lot of places is that human relationship is the biggest strength in politics when there are like minded people sitting in a room or sitting at a juncture who have a common goal methods alag alag honge but if the goal is common wo wo ek aur cheez kehte hain i'm i'm mujhe bilkul i'm not hesitating to be quoting him a lot not only because i work for him but also because i adm- sincerely admire his approach towards public public policy and politics वो कहते हैं कि मतभेद होने चाहिए बट मनभेद नहीं होने चाहिए फाइनल ऑब्जेक्टिव दैट यू आर वर्किंग टुवर्ड्स हैज टू बी द सेम द मेथड्स एंड द मींस बाय विच यू विश टू अचीव कैन बी सर्टेनली डिफरेंट दैट इज प्रिसाइजली व्हाट वी आर ट्राइंग टू डू अंडर हिज लीडरशिप टेकिंग एवरी स्टेक होल्डर अलॉन्ग विद अस टूगेदर टूवर्ड्स अ कॉमन ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड इट वॉज एक्सलेंट टू बी यर अमंग सच अ वाइब्रेंट पैनल and dhruv ji thank you so much for uh, inviting and yeah thank you so much kunal ji you know every year we get together here and we talk about smart cities um and a smart city in india is very different from a smart city somewhere else in the world but the common theme is that to make people's lives better and like we've discussed everyone has a right to clean air everyone has a right to health and safety and all of these things encompass mobility and and smart cities so i think we've covered an enormous array of of topics um we don't have too much time but i would definitely like to do some q and a there was a question here if we can start with the gentleman in front if you would introduce yourself please and then who your question is directed to yeah thank you so much uh, i'm sunil kumar shinde from uh, mumbai and solapur i should say thank you to kunal ji and uh, sankaj ji first because he has given me good big idea here i am currently working on a bigger city uh, project uh, Uh, I by keeping hundreds of years here vision okay uh, that is uh, uh, called solapur metro okay here and uh, of course the same project has been presented to uh, nitin ji gadkari sir and we have spent almost one and a half hour to discuss this project along with the other projects uh, which is going on in india which is completed and which is ongoing as well and uh, we dis- discuss a lot here as uh, say kunal ji and the sanket ji has been sure about the cost of the project which we uh, which we have uh, uh say estimated around 30000 crores for this project and they have given uh, here idea that the cost which was uh, i think nothing but 13000 crore for the tunnel which has got reduced to 4.5 crores definitely and uh, that the the challenge is here here only here only of course i need to meet you personally uh, kunal ji and uh, sanket ji for this particularly and the punit ji of course uh, here uh, sir have been highlighted one point we discuss a lot about metro 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 there that during this uh, course of meeting and suddenly to- the topic got changed to the sky bus that means the next time which i am going to say get a topic to uh, nitin gadgar sir then the topic may get changed suddenly that's the real <laughs> really <laughs> thank you so much uh, anyone else have a question anyone have a question in front Uh, very insightful uh, discussion my name is sp patil i work for ultra tech uh, we have been talking about what you call a individual mobility but something on mass rapid uh, i think which is the key for india which we are also talking about reducing the number of cars on the road uh, sorry punit ji 
the idea is to also enable uh, the mass rapid to be. For example, we are also, I think, uh, Minister Sir himself has told to do the first pilot on Hyperloop between Mumbai and Pune. I think uh, it is it is the right opportunity. While as bullet train has already started, uh, that what are the thoughts around uh, improving the mass rapid uh, transit? Because affordable, so many people can do go together. Uh, the 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 intensity or the pressure on the roads can be reduced. And uh, so, any thoughts around that, sir? And again, sustainable. Uh, way of uh, looking at some of these uh, solutions for the country. Kunal will speak on this. I will just start it. Mass Rapid Transit Transport System, MRTS, what we call. I think India, what I know, it started in 1990s somewhere through three, four different modules like BRTS, Bus Rapid Transport System. One was, uh, you know, MRTS we say with metros, light metros and all that. Indore was one model where really BRTS worked. Else I doubt, I don't have any successful example except Indore. I was collector Ujjain so I can successfully and confidently tell that yes Indore model had worked. About MRTS and what you were saying then to Hyperloop and all. You see every city in India have its own you know equations ek cheez jahan kuch chalegi jaise mumbai is also a port is a coastal city wo it can't be for the bangalore today you know from bangalore you go, need to go to the airport aapka ek sawa ghanta kahi nahi gaya honestly speaking because it is congested and all we are bringing the satellite the uh, the ring road and all but so one model can run for some all all of them Again, uh, there were different models and now we have, like we know Delhi metro and all, lot of metros are coming up. And you say, I think Solapur is coming up with a metro. So, uh, as a policy maker, in formation of policy, what we design is the customized model of MRTS. Again, when you talk Hyperloop, ki baat kar rahe ho, to again, the heavy footfall and shuttling is happening basically Gujarat Maharashtra. Ahmedabad, Mumbai belt, where there is more traffic and there are more passengers. Utna shayad, hardly I don't think anywhere in India it will be there. So yes, we are moving ahead. The positive point is yes, we are moving ahead, we are going ahead. Uh, but the pace, the pace is an issue. Somewhere, I am from Pune. Pune ka example mein bahut achhi tarah de sakta hu. I am born and brought up in Pune. Pune mein dekho kya hua? Pune mein jo growth rate tha, wo match nahi ho paya with resources. City started expanding, you know, growing leaps and bounds, and then abhi bhi abhi bhi metro I think shuru nahi hui hai. Abhi pichle maine shuru hui hai, but just one stretch. But yes, we have catch up late, almost 20 years. So again, time is a constant and with time, cost comes. Apart from the, I think Kunal will explain better. Kunal. MRTS, Mass Rapid Transit System, is a big umbrella. Talking about a particular public policy which can implement MRTS in India is TOD, essentially. That is Transit Oriented Development. Now, what is TOD? TOD essentially encapsulates three things. One, ability to make a shift from private transport to public transport. Two, ability for the government to raise funds and to, and to capture funds from that particular model. And C, which a lot of us usually miss in, public in MRTS, is accessibility, pedestrian safety, walkways and ability for normal people to be able to walk on roads, cycle on roads. It is a big concept of transit oriented development. Kya sarkar ke paas paisa hai to build metros in every city jo bhi man mein aaye? The answer is no. Which is why the concept of VCF comes in, value capture finance. Aap kya karte ho? When you identify a stretch, let's say jahan pe aapko MRTS establish karna hai, 
after making initial upfront investment into let's say either a metro or an aerial tramway which is called the flying bus ka technical name sahab aerial tramway hai so there's no bus which flies it is it looks like a bus which is flying because of the you know very thin threads and the ropes which is why it looks like a flying bus the word is an aerial tramway a lot of good technology such as doppelmayer and poma are developing that so what happens is whenever there is investment in public transport and infrastructure in a particular area the land value adjoining to that particular area is not at least quadrupled enhancing the government's ability to retrieve or to capture that additional value of land in the form of taxation and then again pull it into the infrastructure so that the initial upfront cost made by the government is again recovered is the key for mrts so this whole concept together is called transit oriented development which ministry of housing and urban affairs is doing a fantastic job for it not to give you a sarkari answer that we are from road transport and highways ye housing and urban affairs hai giving you a small anecdote here i was in touch with some people in germany uh, a couple of weeks ago they contacted me from one of the premium institutes and they asked me sir we want to have in make investments in manufacturing of evs i said sir you are calling the wrong department you have to go to the department of heavy industries they said okay sir then we also have to make investments in battery manufacturing for evs i said sir you are again in the wrong department you have to talk to new and renewable energy and ministry of power they asked me a very simplistic and funny question which kept me thinking सर आप सही में ट्रांसपोर्ट मंत्रालय में ही काम कर रहे हैं सो दिस इज हाउ सिस्टम इन दी गवर्नमेंट आर इंटरटाइंड वेर टी ओडी एज ए कंसेप्ट एम आर टी एस एज ए कंसेप्ट केवल मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर अपने अलग अपने दम पे नहीं कर सकता इसमें आपको स्टेट गवर्नमेंट म्यूनिसिपल एजेंसी क्योंकि अगर आप टैक्सेशन कलेक्ट कर रहे हैं तो आपको लैंड कोड्स को और लैंड कोड्स को कैसा आप यूज कर रहे हैं उनको आपको स्टेट के अर्बन डेवलपमेंट से अमेंड करा के modify karana hoga so that you can recover that amount of taxation from the enhanced value of the land so whenever you are talking about such a policy there needs to be coherence not only at the level of a central government but at the level of the state government and also at the level of the municipal authorities and to trump it all public will to use that system at the end of it yeah, I, i think last question Hello. the gentleman has a bike I'm sorry we won't be able to take one more behind you because we're truly out of time uh, and as I said before this conversation could go on forever so we have to end it somewhere so last question thank, thank you thank you sir I am KS Chauhan from Delhi uh, I want to ask one question that minister is always emphasizing on the quality of roads he most of the time he used the word white topping so actually what it is and how does it affect to the mob- smart mobility in the smart cities that is my question sir what is work uh hello i think the right person is sitting just next to you from ultratech cement right so ye aapko acha batayenge what i can tell you is actually a 6 inch white topping layer of cement proper cement it carries those a very good sizable number of traffic aur india mein dekho traffic agar thoda heavy chhod diya jaye too much heavy or multi axle and all jo 16 chakke aur 20 chakke ke baad chhod do bahut rare hai तो एल एम जैसे अपनी छोटी गाड़ियाँ हैं आप सब लोग इस गाड़ियों में आए होंगे या मैं आया हूँ वो गाड़ियाँ अगर चलती है दैट इज़ वॉट ही इज सेंग अबाउट सी इट्स नॉट जस्ट अबाउट टू बिल्ड रोड्स वी ऑल्सो नीड टू मेंटेन दैम वी ऑल्सो नीड टू मेंटेन रिपेयर एंड ऑपरेट दैम बारिश होती है एक्सीडेंट होता है मैनी फैक्टर्स डैमेज द रोड एंड यू नो तो नाउ दिस इज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ हिज इनोवेशन की हाउ कैन वी गेट अ वेरी इकोनॉमिकल रोड with good advantages and uh, advantages matlab kya jo jitna saal tikega 15 saal 20 saal the more it is the time it will you know benefit so this is what he says actually sir past 70 years mein we are using asphalt roads and bitumen roads then uh, how uh, suddenly it clicks that the we should go for the white topping in spite of See, it is not that we should go completely for the white topping 
वी हैव विटामिन रोड बेसिकली वॉट वी सी जो अपन डांबर की रोड बोलते हैं तो दैट इज़ अ ट्रेडिशनल कन्वेंशन बिल्डिंग रोड्स बट इवन टूडे वी हैव प्लास्टिक प्लास्टिक नॉट इट नॉट अ प्लास्टिक रोड वी यू वी मेल्ट द प्लास्टिक वी इट बिल्ड इन टू इट एंड देन देर इज समथिंग विच वी गेट द स्ट्रेंथ डू द प्लास्टिक देर आर केमिकल्स वी हैव सॉइल स्टेबलाइज केमिकल्स लाइक देर आर प्राइवेट कंपनीज हु कम विद दैट हु हु डिक्रीज द एग्रीगेट एंड यू नो रिड्यूज द कॉस्ट दैट इज इनोवेशन तो हर हर एक तरह का अलग अलग रोड बनाने के मैथड्स हैं तो वाइट टॉपिंग इज वन ऑफ दैम वाइट टॉपिंग कहाँ यू नो कहाँ पर यूजफुल है जिन शहरों में बाईपास बने हैं बाहर से और हैवी ट्रैफिक बाहर से चला जाता है जो अंदर का रोड है तो द इनसाइड रोड जो वी से दैट इट इज़ यू नो ओल्ड रोड और जो भी रह गया दैट इज़ मेड ऑफ वाइट टॉपिंग बिकॉज द हैवी ट्रैफिक डजन गो ऑन दैट रोड द हैवी ट्रैफिक गोज फ्रॉम द बाईपास एंड दिस वाइट टॉपिंग वाला जो सिक्स या एट इंच हम कहते हैं इट इज़ क्वाइट गुड मेंटेनेबल सर्वाइवेबल और दस पंद्रह साल तो चल जाता है जब तक कि आप उसको कुछ करके क्रैक ना हो जाए या यू नो इट्स नॉट प्रॉपरली लेड आउट तो सिलेक्टिव एरियाज के लिए ही वो बात हो रही है थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच टू ऑल द पैनलिस्ट इट्स बिन अ रियली एक्साइटिंग डिस्कशन एंड इट्स बिन थरली एंजॉयबल फॉर मी सो आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू हैव एंजॉयड इट इज वेल रोड पे आप रोड पे बात करो हम रात भर बात करेंगे रोड पर <laughs> कोई इशू नहीं थैंक यू so thank you to our speakers and in fact we could not have asked for better speakers in this session uh, talking about the future of mobility giving us a very clear picture and communicating uh, the thought and the vision of uh, our honorable prime minister and the minister that the future of mobility is uh, going to be as i said shared connected electric uh, with the clean green fuels and um, uh, multimodal seamless uh, connectivity powered by an ecological economic consciousness into it so thanking once again in fact uh, main thanks to uh, kunal ji and sanget ji for also clearing that it's going to be a mixed basket of uh, fuels as we take it forward mixed basket of clean fuels so uh, may i request uh, mr dhruv itself and uh, may i also request mr sajdeva our uh, knowledge partners collectively if they can present uh, the mementos many many thanks to sanket ji thanking mr kunal joshi and thanking uh, mr puneet anand so the automobile industry is also on the green move taking this green mission forward safe secure mobility thank you we'll close with a group photograph of our